Let's apply the force toolkit and some useful examples. So make sure to pause the video and write these steps down. The first thing you need to be able to do when you uh, use the force toolkit is identify the system that is being accelerated. Then define the coordinate system. Identify the forces by drawing a force or free body diagram and include a motion map. If necessary, draw a component diagram and if necessary, rotate the axes. Explicitly write the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Replace the sum of the forces with the actual forces in your free body diagram. And if necessary, write the sum of the forces equals MA in the horizontal and vertical directions. Substitute numeric values where appropriate and solve for unknowns. In this sample problem, a 747 jet land, jetliner lands and begins to slow to a stop as it moves along the runway. Its mass is 3.50 times 10 to the 15 kilograms. Its speed is 27 meters per second and the net braking force is 4.30 times 10 to the 5th newtons. And they ask us what, what's the speed 7.50 seconds later. Well, our first step is to identify the system being accelerated. And in this case, it is the jet. Now that's going to be really important later on because when we calculate in our equation what F equals MA is, the jet is where we will get M and that's what's being accelerated. Next we want to define a coordinate system. So upward is positive and to the right is positive. We also want to identify the forces by drawing a force or free body diagram. So, if our jet is landing, let's say it looks something like this. If our jet is landing and we're going to draw a free force diagram would include a normal force from the runway pushing up on the jet. So that would be a normal force. The jet always also has a weight or force due to gravity. And because it's slowing down, we know there is an applied force in that direction, in the direction that's slowing it down. So let's draw the motion map at this point as well. We know that it's coming in at a pretty fast speed and then it's slowing down to a stop. Because the velocity arrows are getting smaller, the acceleration arrows must point in the opposite direction. Notice something that's really important. Notice that the acceleration arrows are pointing in the direction of the net force. If I look at my applied force, it's the only force that's not getting canceled out. It's pointing to the left and my accelerations are also pointing to the left. We don't need to draw a component diagram. We don't need to rotate the axes. Now we want to explicitly write out F is equal to MA. On the AP test and on your tests, you'll be graded for just writing the sum of the forces equals a mass times acceleration. Now we want to replace the this equation, we want to replace Newton's second law, F equals MA, both in the horizontal and vertical, with the correct forces. So let's look at the vertical. In the vertical, when we write out F is equal to MA, our two forces are FN, the normal force, plus the force due to gravity. But as we notice in the vertical, if we were to draw the motion map in the vertical, there's no velocity and there's no acceleration in the vertical. That, that would be the extent of our motion map. So therefore, in the vertical, the sum of the forces equals zero. In the horizontal, however, if we look at the horizontal and we write out F is equal to MA, Notice that we do have a force in the horizontal, but only one. It's the applied force. It's the braking force. 
and that's going to equal the mass times acceleration. Our next step is to substitute the numeric values where appropriate and solve for the unknowns. So, let's see, do we actually have the applied force? It says the net breaking force is 4.30 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Because it's to the left, we want to plug that value in there, but we want to include the negative sign, negative 4.30 times 10 to the fifth newtons. We know it's mass because remember in F is equal to ma, we said the mass refers to the jet. So the mass is 3.50 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. And we're multiplying that times the acceleration. So the acceleration should come out to be negative 1.23 meters per second squared. But we want to find out what the speed is 7.50 seconds later. So it's important now that we go about using our strategy. So our strategy means we're going to write out x, v initial, v, a, and t. We've already said that the acceleration is going to be negative 1.23 meters per second squared. Uh, it wants to know what the speed is at a time of 7.50 seconds later. Um, we know the initial velocity, it tells us that it, that's going to be 27 meters per second. So we have to find an equation that has our three variables that we know, plus the one that we're looking for, which will be our final velocity. So the appropriate equation there would be V equals V initial plus AT. We plug our values in, 27 meters per second for the initial velocity, plus an acceleration of negative 1.23 meters per second squared, times a time of 7.50 seconds, and that gives me a velocity of 17.8 meters per second. 